Um, I'm going to get your take on this fight in a moment because we're keen to know what kind of Anthony Joshua we're going to get uh, on that particular night, Gareth. This was Anthony Joshua in conversation with Spencer Oliver. He opened about, he opened up about how these days he's not fighting for anybody else. He's fighting for him. A lot of the legends that I admire and I look up to are people that are like doing podcasts now and I can actually go online and I can hear what they have to say. And um, I used to do a lot of it to try and get the respect and admiration from people that I admire. And you're kind of chasing that. That was like, when I lost the belt, it was like, I just felt that admiration and respect from the legends of the game was just like disappearing with those belts. And it was a, it was a hard pill to swallow. And now I'm just in a place where it's like, you know what? Everyone, I'm doing this for myself. Like I ain't going through that no more where I'm putting pressure on on I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Listen, if I just knuckle down and take one day at a time and take one round at a time and I put my mind to it, what will be, will be. Now, I'm not sure what I make of that, Gareth. Are you... I don't, I don't fight for others anymore. I just fight for me. I mean, not that long ago, it was all about the money. I mean, <laughs> well, where no, is his head was, at the moment? It was about the money when he did his um, open day with Jermaine Franklin a few weeks back. Where is his head? I think he's feels released in a way from the hashtag road to the undisputed. He knows that he's lost three of his last five fights. Um, he thinks of himself as a prize fighter now. I think he wants to go out there and enjoy himself. And I think that's the relaxed day. Look, you know, sometimes Anthony Joshua talks in sound bites, doesn't he? And you don't really get, I think, the authentic... He, I think he knows more now what he wants to be or what he rather than being what he thinks he ought to be, which he's been for a long time. Um, I think he's a fascinating character. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go into heavy critique on him. I think his mindset has grown strong in America. As, as Marvin Hagler said, you know, if you want to go into camp properly, go into prison. And he's gone into prison in Dallas, Texas. He's away from his kind of mental scaffolding, as sports psychologists would tell it, in Loughborough or at the EIS uh, in Sheffield and I think with Derek James he's you know he's admitting that the guys pushed him really really hard um, he's got to come out and be aggressive and as we all know it's it's obvious he's got to make a statement uh, a week on oh, yeah, Saturday sure. live on TalkSport by yeah, the way we yeah. are with yeah. the team I'm sure you you guys will be there at the O2 as well well you ought to be um, and uh, hopefully calls out Tyson Fury afterwards what, what, what do you think about Joshua going into this Simon when he comes over with stuff like that I think I think Gareth has encapsulated it absolutely right. I think there is an element of talking in sound bites. I think there is an element of, of of inconsistency about his thinking. But I think he's still developing in every aspect of his life. I think if you talk about the fights that he's had in his in his career when he was fighting and defending his world title, and he's sitting in a in a room while another fighter's getting his um, his uh, taped up, and he's asking the trainer, "How do you think I should fight this fight against Usyk?" And people go, "Hang on a second, you're an hour from fighting a world title fight, and you don't know." <laughs> I think he's a, I think he's an enigma wrapped up in a riddle. I think it would be great for the boxing landscape for Anthony Joshua to come back into the ring, not Jermaine Franklin out in three or four rounds, do it in style, brings back another compelling part of the conversation, another part back, another piece back on the chessboard, a, a, a an irresistible. Express train of finances that brings everybody along with them is something intriguing. I will always maintain that Tyson Fury for me is the generationally best heavyweight. I will always maintain that he will beat uh, Anthony Joshua, but I would rather have. Or he might lose to Usyk. We have to leave that I, caveat. I, I, I would we? maintain that Tyson Fury will beat the lot of them. Yeah, I think so as um, well. And and I would like to see him do it, but I would much prefer an Anthony Joshua posing the question that everybody wants to have answered. Yeah, is. Fury versus Joshua, what does it look like? Because nothing more compelling and nothing greater than having all sure. the belts the, in the this optics, country at the one point. The optics are really important for him right now. And what he is, he's a huge, athletic, powerful fighter who at his best is a brilliant destroyer. He needs to go out with that attitude against Jermaine Franklin, create something viral in that fight, not win over 12 rounds behind his jab. No, do it dramatically. Small yeah, line. Do it yeah. dramatically. Yeah. And then views will change that he's back. There's the 10 80 10 rule. 10 are always loving you. 10% always loving you. 10% always hating you. The 80 swing in the middle. And he needs to get that swing back in his favour. Good right man. Now. Gareth, thanks for being with us.